what's up guys, Jackson here at Toasty DIY, and today we're gonna to be assembling this Stromberg Carlson generator tray, and we'll be showing you guys step by step, and also what the end product looks like with the generator actually installed on it. Let's get right into it. So this tray is very universal. They actually have quite a few different brands out there. This is just a typical Amazon special, $290 prime shipped. It is going to mount on the A-frame part of the tongue. They do also have trays that mount on the back of the trailer or in the hitch if you have one, but I like the idea of this because all of your accessories are already up here such as your propane tanks and your batteries so it just makes sense to me and also all of my windows on this epro 15 tb are in the back so the last thing i really want is to have a generator right underneath the windows giving us carbon monoxide poisoning and a lot of noise all right so i have everything for the actual mount here and then i also have some basic tools realistically you can do all this with i think just a 13 and 14 millimeter uh, socket. They don't need to be deep well. They can just be standard, cheap, Harbor Freight, Walmart, whatever. And theoretically, you could even probably do it with just two pipe wrenches. Now, I did have a solid tank cover where it's just like a big hunk of plastic and you have to pull it up over. I went ahead and bought this cheap, uh, I think it's like a waterproof canvas cover that was like 20 something dollars on Amazon. And it's actually kind of cool. It has like a zipper access to get to the tops to turn your tanks on and off. And then it's elastic at the bottom. So to change out your tanks, you just pull it off. Uh, mine was pretty tight because my tanks are far apart, but I will also link that in the description down below. And both of these will be affiliate links and they will help us out if you guys decide to buy anything. It looks to me like my hardware is unopened, untampered with. So unless someone forgot to add something, I'm gonna assume that that's good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open our nut, but we're gonna need these guys right here. <clears throat> so it looks like they all have two washers and one locking nylon nut, but yeah, they are a total of four inch. I don't know if this is gonna be the final spot, but just don't forget, put your other washer on the other side here. All right, just like that. All right, there's one. All right, go ahead and make sure you have your second washer off. And here is two. Lined up, which once again, uh, looks like it's the exact same. We're just using the second mounting hole. Make sure that you don't leave both washers on. You know, one thing I'm interested to see is, um, you know, so I bought the, uh, I, I just went the typical route that, like everyone goes as far as the camper generator goes. I got one of those Generac 3300Is and I'm curious to see because, you know, I noticed it has a good amount of uh, vibration to it, especially at like lower RPM. I'm curious to see, you know, how much I feel that from inside uh, the trailer, you know, maybe we won't feel it at all. Maybe we'll feel it a lot. I don't really know. All right. So just to recap, we got four of those. Uh, I think there was four inch bolts um, in here. Make sure you have a washer on each side. And we did that already on both sides. So I guess you could say step one is completed. We're gonna go ahead and get our tray out and we're going to be mounting these guys to the back side essentially. All right, so we got six of these and then we're going to be mounting these plates onto it. These, uh, which looks like the holes are all universal, they don't have one direction. So this only goes on one way, just like this. Pretty, pretty simple. And we're gonna have probably the ugly side on the inside, so I'll show you guys what I mean by that. Or sorry, on the outside. So basically, oh, sit that backwards. All right, so washer on the inside. Your leg rests there. So just like that, we're gonna do that six times. All right, so now we have both sides of that mounted, so we can say step number two is done. So we're attaching these two upper pockets, and then we're using figure L, which is the mounting hardware. And so that is going to be these guys right here. So E and then L. And L is going to be now all of these short ones, and there's gonna be 12 of these total. 
Now, I don't know if we're gonna be using all 12 just yet, um, unless we're actually, you know, going ahead and mounting it, uh, which we might be at this point, it seems like. So, go ahead and grab these two guys. These are basically like what we did before. Number Step number one, they're just the opposite end. So these are what's going to stop the tube from the other angle. And now this part's gonna be a little bit adjustable. Um, so, that's gonna be a little bit fun to figure out. So we got both sides very, very loosely mounted. Let's see, these tubes do have, well, yep, same. I really do think they're the exact same on both sides, so it really shouldn't matter which way they go on. So we got one side on. All right, well, let's, uh, let's try putting this on. Yeah, definitely does not seem like it's happy. Seems like we're pretty freaking close to the trailer right now, yeah. All right, so I took a brief intermission because I was tired of recording the same thing over and over again. I ended up actually going back uh, to, well, I changed two things. One, I moved these more forwards. They are definitely not two to three inches away from the frame. Right now, I'd guess both of them are about uh, eight inches away from the frame, eight to 10. But honestly, I just, it, it wasn't working. Like, you know, with it all the way back here, no matter how far I put this back, it would hit the actual trailer. So from mounting this front piece, we're gonna take this L bracket. We're gonna be using these, the rest of these shorter nuts and bolts here. And we wanna to try to get it as level as possible, of course. So the side with the two holes will go at the bottom. And I'm gonna to have to go grab a level here in a second. But basically the L part's gonna face that way. And just like usual, one wash on the outside, one on the inside. And, and you'll have two holes that line up. So just like that. And you shouldn't really need to have the bottom part um, mounted just yet, just because it's gonna sit flat no matter what, unless you have like something in the way. And then our last two really long bolts, these guys right here are going to be for this. So and I'll show you guys how to do that. So we're gonna take the washer, one washer, one nut off. Now in my case, um, sometimes, you know, it depends on like the trailer size, you can use the outer bolts. Mine's gonna be using the inner, just like that. And I can go ahead and put both of them in there. That won't be a problem. And the only way this would, you'll have trouble with this part is if um, you have anything mounted underneath the rail here. All right. Yeah, these, and these ones are insanely long too. We just grade five, so. We definitely don't wanna strip those out. Now this top part's adjustable, so I'd say just get this where you want it, get it straight, good looking, um, and go ahead and uh, tighten this one down. And now with this one, I'm gonna to have to even, uh, you'd have to have a really long deep well uh, to do this. And make sure you kinda of do them, uh, you know, don't tighten one down like, all the way, because that's how you break stuff. Just get it like, you know, snug and then go ahead and go to the other side. Try to make sure that this bracket's as straight as you can get it. All right, so those are pretty tight. My clearance is definitely getting a little bit closer to the, uh, the body here, which I'm a little worried about, but let's go ahead and tighten the sides and see how we're looking.
pretty tight tolerance, like I think. Yeah, I think we're gonna be fi just fine. Um, Cause I, I got really close to the frame. I'm gonna show you guys how close I am. And then I'm gonna show you me kind of trying to wiggle it. I, I don't know if I'd suggest getting as close as I did. I've just, I've already moved this thing like three times now. So this might just have to do for now. I might just have to kind of see how I like it. Um, I think it'll be pretty obvious if it's rubbing. Yeah, so from what I can tell, it's, it's actually, it's kind of weird. Figure in is basically if you don't, so it'd be these holes here, um, and I'll, my tube is blocking those holes. And the tubes don't have holes big enough for that, so you'd have to drill your own holes, and I'm betting that's what people, I saw people in the reviews saying you had to drill holes, and I think that's if you wanted to mount these. So now let's go ahead and see if we can get the generator up there and see how it does. All right guys, so I got my Generac GP3300i, brand new. I've only actually started it like literally one time. I haven't even really done the break-in procedure properly yet, which I do need to do. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just show you guys what it's like. So obviously starting is gonna be a little weird. You know, you might wanna get an electric start, especially if you have like bad shoulders, you're older, whatever, maybe you're shorter. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead, set this to choke. Yeah, I mean, it, it if, if you have a, a little bit of pull strength, then you'll be just fine. So I got economy right on, economy mode on, setting it to run. Um, making sure my exhaust, where's my exhaust? Okay, exhaust is blowing out the back. You really don't want your exhaust, your generator blowing towards it because you might end up burning your paint or something. But I'm going to go ahead and go handheld. And uh, yeah, very quiet right now in economy mode. I'm going to go ahead and bring it inside here see if we can even hear it inside or not okay so as far as the inside noise goes because um, i'm sure a lot of you are going to be wondering about that definitely a little bit of vibration it's not terrible um you probably can't even hear it at all because i do have my lav mic on but you can definitely feel it like got a couple of things vibrating in this area um, but it's not like terrible you know and it's definitely not going to be any louder than the ac so i'm going to go ahead and let's give this a go so i got low cool on i just heard the generator go into a higher rpm to support that so right now it's it's uh, probably closer to like you know closer to full throttle i guess maybe three-fourths throttle it's not too loud, <laughs> you can see it's definitely shaking this. Once again, check that clearance, you know? I mean, so far I'm not hitting it, but man, I'm still on the fence about moving this thing forwards a little more. I'm just, I really don't want it rubbing uh, through the fiberglass, but so far it's not. So with it going a little faster, yeah, definitely some vibration, but I mean, once again, with the vibration, it is definitely not any louder than our AC. Our AC makes way more noise inside. Um, than the generator does. Just the AC doesn't really vibrate. The generator does vibrate a little bit. So, I mean, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I do need to get the proper connector because right now I'm using just like the standard three prong 110. I need to get the right connector so that I'm not using uh, a 20 amp. I'd rather be on the, uh, well, I guess it's 20.8 amps. So I guess no matter what outlet you use, you only get 20.8 uh, amps which I guess does get pretty close to 2,800 watts now I'm thinking about it. it. Smells nice and burnt. Probably definitely burning off some of the factory lubes and stuff right now. But yeah, um, you know, so overall, everything seems to be working pretty good. I'm pretty happy, um, you know, with the way that it turned out. Happy with uh, the camper and everything. So I will be doing some videos on this actual camper as well soon if you guys want to see any of that. But yeah, I hope that, um, you know, everyone learned a little something. I hope the instructions are a little bit easier from this tutorial. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm liking it so far. I don't really see myself having any issues with it. It's, I mean, it's very strong. I would think this thing could hold a few hundred pounds just fine. Right now, all together with the generator and the weight of this bracket, I've probably added about a hundred pounds near the tongue or pretty much tongue weight. So keep that in mind, especially if you're pulling something smaller. I'm using a pretty big truck, so it won't be really a problem for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, Check out our main YouTube channel on Toasty Clips. We'll see you guys later. Peace out.